G'day Argy Bargy crew, hope you're having a fantastic day and everybody's happy and healthy. Alright, uh, I've had a few emails from people and seen on the forums that people are always interested in knowing how uh, to set their steering wheels up, all the buttons and so forth on it. This isn't a video to show you how to use force feedback or anything like that. This is just about the buttons that I use on the steering wheel and, and in particular the G29 Logitech. Like I say, I've had a few emails and a couple of people asking in the videos how I actually have mine set up because it looks like it's a lot easier to them than the way they've got their set up. So I'll show you how I've got it set up, but bear in mind that I have these tablets, uh, my button box, which I've, I've built myself and which I will be selling soon. Uh, this is a prototype, but uh, probably early February, mid-February, I'll be starting to sell these and at a very good price. Uh, anyway back to what I was saying. So yeah, I'll show you exactly how I've got it set up, but you've got to remember that I've also got all these other controllers. So um, I use them for various things, but I also have most of the settings on the steering wheel because I started off with just the steering wheel and just the gear shift. I didn't have any of these other uh, items that you see in front of me. So most of the settings were set up on here, but now I've gotten used to using them on the other ones. Uh, so, like I say, this will show you where to start, and then if you do add stuff on later on, it won't hurt. It'll, it'll make it a lot easier, in fact. But what we'll do is we'll firstly start off with uh, showing you how they all work, and then we'll go into the binding and whatnot. All right, so I'm going to start up the truck. I'm using the button box to do it. I normally would use this, but I've got this set up now, so it, it normally was programmed here, start. It still starts on this, but it doesn't turn the electrics on here anymore. This used to be a one-use one button that used to turn the electrics on, in other words, give you ignition, and then start the truck at the same time. Uh, you can still do that um, with the way I've, I've got this uh, uh, mapped, but the way I've got it mapped with the button box, I can't use it to start it straight up. It can, for example, if I turn the ignition off, and then just have the ignition on. You can see I can start the truck from here, but if I turn it off, nothing, it's dead. So I have to have the ignition on to start it from here. But anyway, you'll get the idea. So here we go, back into it. Indicators, right with the paddle, left with the paddle. Very easy, easy to remember. There your indicators. That's how I've got it set up. On the uh, D-pad here, I have the trailer brake set to the up. If you look down on the screen, you'll notice that on the right where the steering wheel is, you'll see that the uh, trailer brake, as I press it up and down, is moving. The reason I use that there is if I'm on an off-ramp, on a highway or whatever, freeway, whatever you want to call it, interstate, and it's a steep off-ramp and I've had to stop behind traffic before I can move on. If I've got a heavy load, the truck will try to roll back and therefore it may stall, it may roll back into another car. So I hit the uh, D-pad, that it, uh, in, in turns on the uh, trailer brake uh, and then I can just ease off the uh, clutch and ease on the throttle and I can take off without rolling back. So that makes it a lot easier. Uh, then left on the D-pad is actually the uh, look left and look right. And right on the D-pad. Left, right, quite easy. And the down is to turn on and off the uh, my head tracking. But if you're not using head tracking, that can be your handbrake. I have my handbrake set onto the uh, button box, but it used to be here for the handbrake. But now that I have head tracking in the button box, I've moved that over to here. So that could be your handbrake there. Uh, the triangle, or the, uh, yeah, sorry, the triangle is for your smooth centering in interior. The circle is for your right smooth and the square is for your left smooth. 
Now they, this is a plug-in that just makes it a nice smooth one movement. Okay, and if you're interested in that plugin, just hit me up in the comments below and I'll let you know what that plugin is. Uh, but it it requires setting up and whatnot and it, it's all explained in the plugin. But again, if you're interested in that, let me know and I'll in the comments and I'll let you know about it. So this is your just your normal looking left and right with the D-pad. As you can see it takes quite a long time and it's can be yeah this is just a lot smoother doing it with the uh, plug-in boom makes it a lot easier when you pull up at any intersection bang turn left have a look turn right have a look again now that I use head tracking I don't really use that very often because I, I use my head tracking to do it but again this is how I had it set up prior to that so it makes it easier for you guys uh, <clears throat> L2 is the horn makes it nice and easy. R2 is the external view to so when I'm outside the truck or want to go outside the truck I just hit R2. X is the internal view. R2 is the external. Boom, 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 boom. And when I'm outside I've got these buttons on the D-pad to look around. Okay, so that's those. Uh, the R3 is the high beam switch. Turns my high beam on and off, you probably notice it more down here because I've actually got the auto high beam and lights on at the moment so my high beam actually won't work when there's cars around because it automatically dips the lights and then when the cars are gone it turns the high beam back on. But that's what R3 is, that's for the high beam. Uh, L3 is a cruise control, that turns the cruise control on, turns it off uh, to increase Cruise control, I use the plus button, and to decrease it, I use the minus. Really simple. Uh, and there's the share button, is the jake brake. And to adjust the jake brake, I use the red dial. And that, to turn it to the right, increases the jake brake, turn it to the left, decreases. So, jake brake is a share button, increase, decrease is the red dial. Option button is for the navigator. If you look on the at the truck, you'll see that when I press the uh, option button, it turns on the navigator and then cycles through its uh, different functions. By clicking it once, turns it on. Clicking it a second time, only the information at the top of the screen is turned on. If you're interested in that plugin, let me know in the comments. I'll give you a link to it. And turning it the third time turns it off. Once turns it on. Boom. Easy. The PlayStation uh, button is the zoom for the navigator. If you look at the navigator down in the bottom right, you can see that I'm zooming or going through the various zoom levels of the navigator using that button. So, yeah, I think I covered everything there. If I didn't, let me know. Yeah, I think I covered everything. Again, like I say, the uh, center button of the red dial is for the stop and well, uh, for the start or emergency start if the truck is stalled. Let's say, for example, where are we? Let's go into eight gear. Go to take off. Whoops, stalled. I can start it again. Well, I've got to get out of gear. Hang on, there we go. So it starts again, bang. Or I can use my ignition. But you can use this for both. And I'll show you how to set that up. All right, so let's go into the button binders. And show you how it's uh, how I bind them. Just a quick heads up: if uh, you make a mistake and you want to undo it so that uh, there's no key bound to a certain feature uh, function, let's do this. For example, I don't want left button on shift up. Okay, all you do is you come to unassign down the bottom here, then select that uh, mistake you've made, and it removes it for you. It's uh, quite easy. So yeah, just click on Assign and click the uh, button that you want to unbind. Okay. Okay, so the first one up will be, let's pick the indicators. Okay, so left indicator, as I said, is the paddle. So all you do is you click on the 
uh, button that you, or the function that you want to use the button for, and then you just press the button that you want that to be bound to. It's that simple. You can actually hold the button down if you want that to uh, operate the function where you've got to hold the button down. But most of the things I use are just a one click. Um, I use the hold down for various buttons on the um, button box that I've got because then I can add two or three functions to the one button. For example, on my light switch, you press it once, it turns parks on. Press it twice, it turns the low beam on. And if you hold it down, it turns the high beam on, as well as all the other lights. So instead of having to have a separate button for the high beam, I can have just the one button for the lights, the parkers, the lights, and for high beam, if you get what I mean. Um, and then you can do that with various other things. But again, that's another video. So for now, all I'm using is a one click. I'm not using the hold down. Okay. So for the right indicator, the same thing. Bang, down. That simple. And basically, you do that with all of them. It, it, you know, it's just a matter of one click, and uh, or click the the function that you want. Hold the button or not? Don't hold the button. Then press the button, and uh, that will bind it. So the next one is the trailer brake which is up here. So again, this would have NA written in it, and I would just then press the up button on the joy hat, and that now is the trailer brake. And then for the uh, external view, oh, sorry, for the look left and look right, go down to the camera controls, and I go to the look left, click on that, press the left hat button, look right, Press the, light, the right hat button, and it's bound. That's simple again. And then again, like I say, for the down, I've got it set to the um, head tracking, which I think is in gameplay. But I, I, again, you could use this for your handbrake. Uh, where is that? Parking brake, there we are. So if you wanted to, you could use that. Like I say, you could press this, press down, and that now becomes your park brake. But I've got it set up so the park brake is on here, on the uh, button box. I use this to turn my head tracking on and off. All right, then the next one uh, is the horn. Now, with the horn, you want the air horn, not the standard horn or the light horn. And the differences are the air horn is the uh, horns that are on the roof of your track, uh, the ones that sound like train horns or bull horns or whatever you want to call them. Um, so you can just press that and press L2 and it now becomes your air horn. You don't want your standard horn because that sounds like a, a poor excuse for a horn. It's just a standard uh, car horn. Your light horn is actually like flashing your lights. So it's not really a horn, it just flashes your lights. I don't use that so I don't worry about it. It is mapped to the keyboard. That's the, the default one. But if you want to map it to something else, you would click where it says NA and then press the button that you want to map that to. All right. Then your next one is the, the R2, which is your external view. You go down here to your camera views and you go to chase, chasing camera. I call it external view. They call it chasing camera, which is the camera outside so you press or click on here on chasing camera then click r2 and that will bind that for you the next one l3 which is your cruise control back up to your truck cruise control there it is cruise control so what you do is you click on that click l3 and now your cruise control is set to it here then you want your decrease and your increase so your increase cruise control press your plus button and you decrease press your minus and they're met okay so the next one you want is the triangle button and that is for the smooth interior plugin that we used or we're using or i'm using and if you're uh, interested in using that um again like i say 
uh, leave a comment down below and I'll point you in the right direction. Okay, so what you want for the triangle, because that's the interior um, of the cab, you want that to be a nice smooth move and that will be interior look forward. So you click on here, press triangle, and that gives you the interior look forward. Then you want the interior look left with the square. So you click interior look up left and hit square. Then you want to look right. So interior look up right. So you press the zero. And then for uh, interior camera, unless I've already done it, we'll do it again anyway. Adjust the interior camera so that you come back from the exterior view. You just press the X. All right. So X is for coming back into the truck after being outside. And triangle is for recentering the camera after you've looked either left or right. So that's the difference. Then uh, what you want is you want the Jake break. And that is done with the share button. So you go back up to, it's actually the engine brake, I call it a Jake break. You go up to your engine brake, but you want the engine brake toggle. So you click on that, press your share button. The reason you want the toggle is because if you make it just the engine brake, you have to hold the button down. I prefer to make it a toggle so that I can click it on, do my bit, give gear down through the gears, Jake brake on, when I'm finished, hit again and turn it off. If you have it to hold it, you've got to hold it, change your gears, it's, it's too awkward as far as I'm concerned. Then to adjust the jake brake, I use the red dial. So to increase it, I turn it right. And to decrease it, I turn it left. Again, turn it right for the in increase, left for decrease. Again, very simple. Uh, then we look at the um, navigation which is through the options button here. And that is down here under route advisor modes. You click on that, click the options button, and that brings up your route advisor or your navigation. Then you want with your PlayStation button, you want that for the zoom. And what I do for that is I use the zoom out. You can use the zoom in whichever one you prefer. I use a zoom out only because that's what I chose first. So you choose that and press your PlayStation button. And now you can zoom it, go through the zooms of the, uh, the navigation. The start stop button. This can be a little bit tricky in, unless you know exactly how it works. But with the start stop button, you have two um, functions for that. You have the start stop engine. And then you have the start stop ele engine electricity. What that means is the ignition. So it means turn the ignition on or off. Okay. So to, to for, if you're just using the steering wheel and you're using the middle button here around where the red dial is, you're using that button, you want these two empty. Okay. Because if they're not empty, you won't be able to start or turn the ignition on with this button. So I'll do it now and show you what I mean. So if we go and unassign these two and then assign this button here in the middle of the red dial to start stop engine, we should be right. Let's double check. Okay, we're driving along. I'm going to have to stop. So, engine off. If I press it once, ignition is on. Press it twice, it starts. Press it again, turns it off. So it works. All right, so let's go back out into the buttons and uh, keys. Or keys and buttons. And just double check that so you know exactly what we're looking for. So that's what we want. We want all these vacant with no NA, not applicable. And you want the button that you're using in start, stop engine. If you put it in start, stop engine electricity, all that does is turn the ignition on, but it won't start the engine. 
by putting it here in the start stop engine it actually turns the ignition on and starts the motor but for now i'm just going to set that back up the way i had it so that i can use my ignition and that should work for me i'm just going to double check it to make sure yep excellent all right so that should be all i think i've covered everything and uh hopefully that helped you out and got you on the, the right track at least now you know how to set them up and you can set them up exactly the way you want if you're not happy with the way i have it but this is the way i have it because i feel it's quite easy for me makes me feel comfortable everything's there in front of me all right so yeah if you liked it like the uh video subscribe if you haven't already share it with your friends if you think it'll help them out and uh hopefully yeah you did enjoy it and if you did we'll catch you in the next one bye for now